Hi, everyone. My presentation today is about what is greenwashing and how to avoid it. My agenda for this presentation will be the greenwashing definition, uh, what is the negative impacts of greenwashing and how to avoid uh, greenwashing as consumer and as a business and uh, some facts and figures and some uh, real world examples from fashion and oil and gas industry and uh, highlights for uh, Thrive project contributions. Uh, I want to start my presentation uh, with a quote uh, for uh, John Electron. Uh, he said that I am worried about greenwashing. I think we should come down on it very, very hard, whether it is with criminal intent or actively deceptive. Aggregation of environmental problems uh, had led companies to seek the development and commer commercialization of green products. Uh, so some companies mislead uh, their stakeholders through pheno phenomena called greenwashing. The concept greenwashing uh, refers to the practice of falsely promoting an organization's environmental efforts or spending more resources to promote the organization as green than are spent to actually engage the environmentally sound practices. Thus, greenwashing is um, the dissemination of deceptive information regarding uh, environment, uh, the organization's environmental strategies, goals, motivations, and actions. Actually, the concept of greenwashing uh, evolved in 1986 uh, by the environmentalist uh, J. Westerville. Uh, he coined the term greenwashing after a visit to Vigi uh, in uh, 1983. During his trip, he observed that uh, a resort uh, encouraging customers to reuse their towels uh, to protect the ocean and reefs, as highlighted in their uh, marketing. Uh, despite this eco-friendly message, um, John... Uh, noted that uh, the resort was expanding rapidly, uh, constru constructing new buildings with little consideration for environmental impact. So uh, the resort claimed in environmental concern when in fact, uh, the act was designed as a cost saving measure. We need to understand that uh, there are several, several reasons why businesses greenwash. Some businesses may do it intentionally to mislead consumers and boost, uh, boost sales. Uh, others may do it unintentionally because they do not fully understand the requirements of making environmental claims. Um, regardless uh, of the reason, we need to know that greenwashing can have many negative consequences for business and for the environment, of course. So what is the negative impact of greenwashing? Uh, number one, the cons consumer deception. Uh, because when companies make uh, false claims about their environmental practices, consumers may be misled into thinking they are making sustainable choices when actually they are not. Uh, the second one can be the lo loss of trust. Uh, when consumers discover that they have been misled by false environmental claims, they may be uh, lose trust not only in the specific company, but uh, in the corporate sustainability initiatives and all the environmental claims in general. Uh, also, um, it can undermine uh, eco-friendly uh, practices and efforts uh, because the presence of uh, the misleading claims in the market can make it challenging for the consumers to differentiate between truly sustainable products and the uh, those false fully market as such. Uh, added to that waste of resources is also a negative impact because companies uh, that engaged in um, greenwashing may invest resources uh, in marketing uh, campaigns rather than uh, making actual improvements to the environmental practices. 
uh, added to that uh, the harms of the environment uh, because in case uh, where the companies falsely claim environmental benefits without making actual actual improvements the environment can suffer and the consumers if the consumers um, continue to, to support these uh, uh, products and companies it may contribute to increased resources depletion or pollution uh, also, uh, it can lead to legal consequences because the regulatory body, uh, bodies can make actions against companies that in, engage in deceptive marketing practices, leading maybe to fines and uh, reputational damage. Now we will go to how to identify greenwashing. You can see in this screen, like we have like general labels. It's not a certification. It, misleading because like bio echo it's not clear enough for everyone as consumers so um in this case we are the consumers here are some uh, strategies we can uh, adapt to uh, identify and spot the greenwashing um number one we will go to the market we can start by focusing uh, on the terminologies, uh, if a product or company uses terms like eco-friendly, green, sustainable, without providing specific details or certifications, it may be a greenwashing. Also, the lack of transparency. If a company does not provide like clear information about its in environmental initiatives or sources, it may be also greenwashing. Also, uh, we can focus on the claims without proof, um, like we need to um, have an evidence uh, to support the environmental claims. If a product or company makes a bold statement without consider considerate uh, proof or third party certifications, it may be greenwashing. Also, we have to uh, focus on a, a single attribute because um, like greenwashing often involves uh, highlighting of one only one positive aspect while ig ignoring uh, the other negative environmental impacts. So the truly sustainable product or company should consider a range of environmental factors. Uh, the company should consider the overall impact of their industry. So it's important for us as consumers to distinguish between uh, weak and strong sustainability. Also, uh, we can um, focus on uh, the false certifications, verify the legitimacy of uh, certifications. Some companies may use misleading or irrelevant uh, Certification, certifications to uh, appear environmentally friendly. Uh, we need to check these certifications uh, and check the organization uh, organizations that uh, uh, issue this certificate. Also, uh, sometimes the companies make a comparisons to non-existent standards. Some uh, comparing a product to a non-existent or irrelevant standards. So we need to uh, research industry standards to ensure the com comparison are valid are and true. Uh, also, uh, sometimes there is inconsistent messaging, uh, like um, we need to watch uh, the inconsistencies between companies' environmental claims and overall business practices. If there is like misalignment, it may be also indicate a greenwashing. Also as uh, excessive packaging, if a product claims to be environmentally friendly, but um, uh, it's uh, excessively packaged, it could be a red flag. Because uh, true sustainability should consider the entire life cycle, including packaging. Um, also, uh, it may be uh, useful to check uh, for independent reviews, look for independent uh, reviews and assessment for a company or product environmental practices can provide uh, insights be beyond the company's own messaging. On the other hand, how we can avoid uh, the greenwashing as a business or company. 
as a company, uh, you need to like make a clear claims, include details such as a specific units of measurement, for example, 70% uh, organic cotton razors and made with organic cotton. Uh, also, uh, you need to support uh, your sustainability claims with data uh, by uh, keeping current data available in your uh, platforms, website, and so on. So uh, also you can use only the data can be verified or if possible, include credible third party certifications from such as carbon trust standards, forest stewardship, uh, uh, council, uh, rainforest uh, aliens or energy star. Also, you can clean up the business operations, and this is the most important part. If a business wants to make uh, to market their products as eco-friendly, they need uh, to make a sustainability part of their business model and apply the sustainability practices uh, in the manufacturing, uh, waste disposal, and all the operations. Uh, also, um, as a business, you should be honest about your sustainability practices and plans and inform your consumers about the overall sustainability practices and uh, targets. Also, you should make sure uh, that images and advertisements can, and packaging are not misleading. Like don't use like green color or images like trees and flowers to imply that your products or brand are eco-friendly if that is not the case. Now we have uh, some uh, figures uh, based on the count of ESG uh, risk uh, in Europe and Americas. Uh, it it shows us how industries have issues uh, related to climate greenwashing. We can uh, find that oil and gas, most of the time they make uh, wrong claims and they try to uh, make it for the consumers that they are supporting the renewable energy while they support fossil uh, fuel and also uh, banking and financial services in the uh, industrials and constructions food and beverage uh, all of them have some greenwashing incidents but the most goes for oil and gas and we will have uh, this we will discuss uh, an example from this industry on the uh, other hand uh, this is the most uh, climate related is issues uh, most companies have incidents uh, with impacts on uh, landscapes, ecosystems, and biodiversity. Some have waste issues, and also, of course, of course, most of them have climate change, uh, uh, greenhouse gases, uh, emissions, and global pollution. The first example is from H and M. Uh, it's a fashion brand, well-known uh, brand. Um, H&M, uh, among the companies that were uh, coughed greenwashing over uh, years, uh, as we know, the fashion brands contribute to the massive amount of textile waste caused by the clothing industry. Uh, fashion brands uh, have a habit of advertising its green initiatives widely, despite uh, it being a tiny part of its operations. For example, uh, in uh, 2000. Uh, H&M launched its own line of green clothing titled Conscious. Uh, the company claims uh, to use organic cotton and recycled polyester. Um, however, um, the line is nothing, but it was a marketing strategy uh, used to make themselves appear more environmentally friendly. When uh, looking at H&M Conscious uh, line, there is no single uh, legal definition for marketing friendly words such as sustainable, green, or environmentally friendly. Uh, so H&M was then criticized uh, by the Norwegian Customer Authority for misleading marketing of their conscious collection because uh, the information uh, given regarding sustainability was not sufficient, especially given that the conscious collection uh, is advertised as a, as a collection with environmental benefits. The other example for, uh, for from the oil and gas industry, 
uh, the biggest uh, oil companies remain uh, involved in uh, business of selling fossil, fossil fuel, but their marketing is all about going green. Uh, well, over half of the big oils advertisements promote uh, the message that they have embraced clean energy and emissions reduction uh, and other uh, claims uh, such as like green claims. So uh, according to a new report from Influence Map, I think Tank uh, based in um, London, the researchers found that uh, BP, Chevron, and Shell Total Energies spent an estimated uh, $750 million last year to promote climate-friendly image. At the same time, the report found that all five companies um, on track to increase oil production uh, by uh, 2026. So they make a claims, but they spend on the non-renewable energy. Uh, also, together, these companies uh, spend only about tenths of their investments uh, on pursuits they consider low carbon. Uh, Shell uh, had the widest gap between its words and actions. The company touted its um, carbon cutting efforts uh, 7% of the time, but it's only put 10% of capital uh, expenditures toward low carbon investments. Uh, also, the companies have uh, recently lobbied the uh, governments to weaken renewable energy policies and further the production of fossil fuel. At the end, I want to highlight that uh, Thrive project uh, have uh, very interesting uh, blogs uh, related uh, to uh, labeling, sustainable, uh, eco-friendly labels, uh, fast fashion, and they have separate uh, archive for uh, greenwashing. So if you did not check this late, uh, until now, go and check it. It's very uh, informative blogs. Uh, and I want to close uh, my presentation with a quote from uh, Canadian Minister of Environment and Climate Change, Catherine uh, Nikina. She said the planet cannot afford delays, excuse, excuses, or more greenwashing. So the knowledge is... Uh, uh, is the most uh, effective way to to fight against greenwashing as consumers because in this uh, equation for now or at least for me uh, I am the consumer I'm not a business owner so I should make uh, aware decisions and be a responsible consumer thank you all for coming and listening and uh, this is the references uh, I hope uh, it was a good presentation for you. Thank you very much. <laughs>